pass complete to Gannon Mosley for a gain of about five yards. And the Falcons finding some space in the middle of the field here. That one just a quick little drag route over the middle. And you got a little more space like that. This Kamayak in front is only a three-man front. And so if you do run a receiver, just drag it behind him sometimes if you can hold. Because more often than not, this Kamayak in D is bringing pressure from at least one of those linebackers. If your line can hold for just long enough, you can find a little space over the middle. Shotgun formation, split receivers, two to the left, two to the right. Mullins approaching his line. Now he'll back off. 10.39 to go. Pump fakes the run, he's got a man blown, coverage down the right side and in for six. It is a 54 yard reception for the Hanford Falcons, Preston Bryant. How about that? They say we are not going silently into the night, we still got three more quarters to play and the Falcons fire back. And now the PAT try is good kick up in the air and count it for the Falcons 28 to 7 the score now Hanford trying to keep it close we'll step aside you're listening to Mid Columbia Conference football on News Radio 610 KONA they are going for two here though with 831 to go in the third quarter and it's picked off Marcellus Pippen with an interception on the two-point conversion try. Running down the sideline, down the ten, five, and in. He intercepted the pass. The two-point conversion, no good, and return all the way to the other side of the field. That is a phenomenal two points earned there by the former Washington State Kroger Marcellus Pippen. The defensive back give him two interceptions already in this game. Sanders, shotgun formation. He'll hand it off to Belzo, and he's wrapped up at the line. This will make it third and one from the one for the Horsemen. Under seven minutes to go in regulation. They trail by nine. Sanders. With Blackwell to his right, they'll hand it off. Up the center, is he in? Uh, no! He got close. He's about six inches shy of the goal line. Fourth and goal, less than a yard. They didn't get it! Idaho did not convert. Sanders on the QB sneak is taken down behind the line. It's a loss of three. Turnover. On fourth down, the rush defense holds the goal line stand. Six minutes to go now. They've got the ball. Ball is at the 20 yard line. Coxio with Belzo to his left. Three receiver set, drops back. Pressure coming, looking to throw. And it's picked off. Intercepted by AJ Smiley, the linebacker. He read the quarterback's eyes. He knew it was heading to the receiver. Jaquan Blackwell intercepted at about the 10 yard line. And he even got a few yards extra. Kickoff right to left and hurtling his way forward then dropping the ball is Andrew Bonfiglio trying to make something happen. He hurtled one of the defenders, but he puts the ball on the turf and it's recovered by Tri-City and the disastrous night continues for Yakima. Nothing going their way. They can't even get out of their own way in some cases. It was penalties that put them down two scores early, but they kind of leveled the momentum out, found some consistency, scored. It was 14 to seven early in the first and then it's been all Tri Cities since, and it's just gotten worse as things continue to unravel for Yakima. They have a chance to come out and score, maybe get something going to make this game remotely competitive, but they put the ball on the turf, and now it's Obi firing away, and receiver falls down. He had collided with an official in the end zone. 
And that upset the timing of the pass and catch that might have been another six for Tri-City and the intended target, Deshaun Williams. Again, he collides with an official. Falls down, tried to get back up with the pass off target because of that. And the canines can breathe a sigh of relief. That could have been six. And the rush will take over at their own 20 yard line which in this game of arena football, remember, is close to midfield. They only play on a 50-yard field here in the indoor leagues. And Obi will fire. Caught by Keithon Fleming, the running back. He ran a nice little wheel route, ended up free on the right side. And it's a big gain. A first down, and now they'll reset at about the 10-yard line. They're actually going to give them more. And it'll be first and goal now from the seven yard line. So falling forward, he actually picked up another three yards with 8.15 to go. Obi will hand it off to Fleming inside, right through the heart of the K-9 defense. Punches it in for six. That's his fourth touchdown of the night. And it is 72 to 7. Tri City on top. An impressive performance here on their home field tonight.